Predicting the Bitcoin bull market top is obviously a practically impossible task. However, this new model has historically predicted every single BTC peak almost perfectly. Let's see what it's currently forecasting for a Bitcoin bull cycle target. So we'll get right into it. And first and foremost, we'll start on the MVRV Z score chart we have here on BitcoinMagazinePro.com. Now what we can see, this has historically been one off, if not the most accurate chart metric data point for actually trying to time the Bitcoin cycle peaks as well as the bottoms as well. We can see this is looking at the raw MVRV ratio and then standardizing this data for the standard deviation or volatility to almost cut out the extremities throughout each single Bitcoin cycle to give us this Z score. So what we can see from this is obviously it's worked amazingly well. However, is it going to continue to work as well going forward? And how can we actually use this data to try and predict where the market may be going? So the first maths predict kind of target forecast new model valuation we're going to come up with is actually based on this MVRV Z score. So what I can do is if I just alter the chart slightly, what we can see is historically the bottoms usually occur when this MVRV is at about 0.75. Of course, the slight deviations here and there, but typically we can see they're all pretty close together whenever the Bitcoin bear cycle is actually bottoming out. And what we can also see with these cycle peaks is they're also diminishing. We can see in 2013, it was around six, we'll say. In 2011, it was around seven. And then in 2017, it was around five, last cycle four. So potentially that's going to top out at maybe around three if we're going to continue this trend of diminishing peaks. So if we go to, over to trading view here, what we can see is just looking at this here. This is the MVRV bands, a metric I've just created here in trading view. And essentially what this is doing is just mapping out almost like the golden ratio multiplier, if I just very quickly show that for some reference. This to uh, give us some indication of where the market may be topping out. So the golden ratio multiplier is just looking at the 350 day moving average, I believe, and then multiplying it by the Fibonacci sequences. So it's going from 1.6 and then two and then three and then four. And we can see in every single cycle, it's actually topping out at a slightly lower top band, a lower multiplication of that 350 day moving average. We can see in the double peak 2013 cycle, it hit all the way here at 13, then eight, then in 2017, five, etc. So if we go back to trading view. I've tried to do something similar, but using the MVRV data. So what we can see is just looking again, I'll scroll across so you can see just this standard, slightly darker green line is the standard realized price of Bitcoin. That's the average accumulation price or cost basis for all Bitcoin on the network where the MVRV is actually based from. So what we can see is historically, this has been a pretty good area to accumulate beneath this. But if we just multiply that by 0.75, we can see it has maxed the Bitcoin bear cycle bottoms almost perfectly every single cycle. Now, what we can also do is take that step further. Like I said, we can actually plot on the multiple of, I think this is five. So we can see in the previous 2013 cycles, it far extended beyond this, but I didn't want to just overcrowd the chart with so many different lines. But if we see 2017, almost perfectly, it reached this line. Then we can add on the four level. So then we can scroll across and see in our previous 2021 cycle, this MVRV multiplied by four was again, pretty much perfectly the cycle peak. So if we add to continue this trend of diminishing peaks, we can add this three lines. So this is the MVRV or the realized price, sorry, multiplied by three. This gives us an MVRV of three if we were to top out at that price. And we can see currently this is around 155, 157, $160,000 around this region. And even though in our two big run-ups that we've already had this cycle, first around 74, $75,000, we didn't quite reach that level. And then again, above $100,000, we didn't reach this level. Also, one thing you'll have to keep in mind is these are moving targets. So every single day, every time anyone's transferring any Satoshis, this realized price is actually updating. And also just for reference, I've added this two line just because, again, it's acted as a very strong level of support and resistance. And as I film this, we're actually pretty close to potentially reaching this line. And again, everyone's going to point towards, oh, but we're not actually going to see significantly higher prices. The, bear, the bull cycle's already topped out by looking at pretty much on-chain data point. I don't think that's the case. We are going to assume that we are setting new all-time highs for the remainder of this cycle. And what I can do is, again, this isn't an exact science. This isn't exactly how it's going to play out, of course. We can see during the big euphoria phases of Bitcoin bull cycles, price rallies exponentially to the upside. And this results in this realized price moving exponentially higher because people are having to pay significantly more for their Bitcoin. However, if we can extend these lines out, and again, we don't know exactly when the Bitcoin bull market is going to top out, but if we just assume we follow a rough four-year cycle like we historically have done for Bitcoin, but we're also going to have a strong Q4, again, very typical for BTC, 
I've just assumed that we're potentially going to top out at the end of this year, the end of 2025, 31st of December 2025, just for 2026. And what I've done is taking the slope, so the average change in the realized price or the multiples of these, the MVRB multiples of the past year. So we can see the general trend because currently, of course, they're moving up a little bit slower. Previously, they were moving up a little bit faster. So we take a general one year average. What I can actually do is just actually map out how these lines would continue to move up. So what we can see is the realized price would be roughly around $60,000, potentially a good area to begin accumulating if we are to potentially reach levels that low. And beneath that, about $45,000 by that 0.75 multiple. But again, this is probably going to take multiple years. If we were actually to see a bear market low in the next 18 months, say, then this would be significantly high. It's not like we're going to see a big bull market peak and a few weeks later, a bear cycle bottom. That's just not how the cycles play out. But we can see this three multiple up here is around $180,000 almost on the dot. If we were to reach the high ones, we can see $240,000 for that four multiple and then all the way up here at $300,000 for that five multiple of the realized price. However, like I said, we're seeing diminishing peaks and the fact that we're kind of assuming that we are gonna see slightly lower multiples on this isn't an exact science to me. I preferred something that can maybe adapt to the changing market dynamics, the evolving price action that we're seeing in Bitcoin. And this is why I really like the MVRV Z score two year rolling. And I try to kind of take the concept, the actual kind of formula behind this, this rolling idea that we're not constantly seeing a very typical Bitcoin cycle. The cycles are obviously going to change. It's a dynamic market. The fundamentals are changing. Of course, institutions are here. There's billions being bought up by these treasury companies. This is changing the supply and demand economics of the network. So if we can adapt some of our data on a two-year rolling basis, then it may give us a slightly better indication of where we can go with the market. And then I also thought of a analysis piece that I did a few months ago now. If you are a site subscriber, then you have access to all of these weekly research pieces, which we put out every single week, but then you have access to all the historical ones as well. And this was kind of bashing the power law at the time and coming up with a Bitcoin model price valuation kind of channel, but not based on a model that's constantly repating. I know everyone's going to bash us, say the power law is great and everything. If you want to use it, that's absolutely fine. Oral models are going to break eventually. If you ask the creators of the power law, they would also agree with that reluctantly, probably. But we can scroll down here. And what I actually did was create an all-time baseline based on the weighted moving average of Bitcoin. So again, rather than just valuing it based on lines on a chart, which every single day are going to change, this is an essentially all-time fair valuation price of Bitcoin. And then I created some multiples of that. And we can see using the Bitcoin Magazine Pro API, we can actually see exactly where these prices are currently. So the all-time weighted moving average is somewhere around here, about $30,000. The multiple of, I can't remember exactly what the multiple was, to be honest. We scroll all the way down, maybe we'll get the data. I can't remember. It'll be in the article somewhere if you wanted to actually see it. We can see that the kind of middle of this middle baseline channel is pretty much exactly where price is now around $120,000 obviously was slightly beneath that but the upper valuation of this was $484,000 and we can see in the previous cycle we didn't reach highs as high as this so again using fixed values isn't an ideal method again Bitcoin is changing the volatility is diminishing the cycle is potentially lengthening so I wanted to kind of incorporate this all-time baseline with this MVRB Z score two year rolling. So if we go back to trading view here, we actually have two different mathematical predictions today. What I can do is add on this here. So this is again, just the all time weighted moving average for Bitcoin. And we can see historically, it's actually marked Bitcoin bottoms fairly accurately. We can see during the 2015, 2016 bear cycle, we actually dipped fairly substantially beneath it for a more sustained period of time. But in the last Bitcoin bear cycle, we pretty much bottomed exactly on this line and then the cycles beneath that, including the COVID 2020 dip, we practically hit this line perfectly before bouncing. And as it is currently around $30,000. But what I wanted to do is take the ratio between the price and this all time fair valuation for Bitcoin. So essentially almost like a Maya multiple, which is just the price divided by the 200 daily moving average. I'm dividing the price by this all time weighted moving average. And then what I'm again doing is standardizing this over a two year rolling window. So very similar to the MVRB Z score, but rather than actually basing this on on-chain data, this is using just purely technical factors. And what we get by doing this is again, a good oscillator that gives us some good highlighted regions when Bitcoin may be overvalued, potentially overextended to the upside, and when we may be at a discount. So again, what I've done is just take the ratio between these, standardize it over a two year period to account for Bitcoin's diminishing volatility. And we can see 
it's actually worked incredibly accurately. If I draw something around here, at around the 5.5 value level, we can see, if you look at something like the MVRV Z score, we have these diminishing peaks where every single cycle, we're not seeing highs as high as we, as we historically have done. But when you account for the changing market dynamics, I mean, if I just go back here to the MVRV Z score two year rolling, we can see we actually had a higher peak in the last cycle than we did in 2021. If I go back here, it's a similar story. What we can see is again, looking at this cycle, we're nowhere near overheated levels. And what we can see is if we just scroll all the way back, every single cycle has topped out at a very, very similar level between this 5.5 or even slightly higher about this six level here, pretty much topping out perfectly every single time. And it's also worked for bottoms as well. If I just draw something potentially around there, again, it's not exact science here. What we could do is get a distribution curve, find out when price is only say 5% above a certain value or 5% beneath that and get potentially valuations from that. But again, if you're just accumulating roughly when we get towards this all time weighted moving average, it's probably a pretty good area to accumulate at. But what we can do is almost work backwards. So we can say currently this is around 2.26, the value on this, the two year rolling all time weighted moving average Z score. But what we can do is work backwards to say, well, what would price have to be to actually shoot this up into this 5.5 or six region? So again, if I just scroll all the way back and what I'll do is add this on here. So again, this is just maths working backwards. At what price would price needed to have reached to result in this two year rolling Z score reaching a value of six or it was 5.5 in the actual case. So what we can see is in the 2013 double peak cycle marks the tops perfectly. And again, obviously it's diminishing as this comes down. It means that the standard deviation or volatility of the market is diminishing. And when we actually shoot to the upside, of course, these widen a little bit. But again, in 2017 marked the top to perfection. What we can do, scroll across in 2021, max the peaks pretty much to perfection. I know everyone's going to point towards that second double top, but if you actually look at the purchasing power of Bitcoin, if you divide Bitcoin by gold, for example, rather than the US dollar, this peak was actually slightly lower. So the purchasing power of Bitcoin at this point was lower. This second rally, the second double top was primarily driven by, driven, sorry, by fiat debasement, global liquidity expansion. So if we take this first peak again, it wasn't an exact perfect point to that all time high, but man, it was pretty damn close. In the thumbnail of this video, I claimed it was 94.05% accurate. What I did there is just measure the percentage difference between the all time high closing price in each of the cycles and the actual difference in what this was predicting. So incredibly accurate. Now what we can do again, if we just scroll across, we can see that this is currently somewhere around $200,000. And if I zoom in, this is actually on a little bit of a downtrend. We can see this is decreasing at the minute. So what we can do is similar to what we did to the MVRV bands is take the more longer term average slope, the difference in the day to day change in this metric. And I think this is slightly more viable to use compared to the MVRV bands, given the fact that this is taking into account the diminishing volatility for Bitcoin. And as well as that, it's also not quite as volatile. If you look at the realized price, the trends that we see in that can be quite exponential to the upside and it can very much level out for many, many months at a time. Whereas the standard deviation, this all time moving average is actually considerably lower. It's much smoother. Therefore, it's slightly probably more reliable to predict based on. So what we can do exact same process before add a line on to assume a continued trend. And again, this isn't how this cycle will play out. The market will do what it wants to do. It does not care what the historical trends have been. It doesn't care what the current market dynamics are looking like and the fundamentals. If we see a big global recession, Bitcoin is likely going to struggle. But what we can do is if we zoom in and assume if things don't change too drastically and historical indications are anything to go by, this is pointing towards a Bitcoin cycle peak. It's somewhere around $220,000. Like I said, I don't necessarily think that's exactly how this is going to play out. And there's a lot of unknown variables. We don't know exactly how long this cycle is going to last. This is again, under the assumption that we're going to have a strong Q4 and potentially top out similar to how we've done in previous cycles on a four year basis. But if this cycle extends for say, another year, if we just extend this out to, if we go to the MVRV bands actually and extend that out, I haven't actually added that as a variable and just change that to 500 days, for example. So it'll be roughly towards the end of 2026. We can see that this would put us at around $240,000 based on this. So these are changing. There's too many variables. Anyone that's telling you that there's a model with 100% certainty, if anyone's saying that power law is going to be 100% correct going forward, this isn't the case. This isn't how markets work. We need to react 
to the changing supply and demand when people are actually selling Bitcoin. This is what's going to impact the price. It's supply and demand economics. It's not technical factors on a chart. It's not mathematical predictions. So as fun as these are to do, and as much as this seems actually one of the more potentially likely and historically accurate going forward metrics that we can actually look towards, I would not put too much weight in these. I wouldn't put too much weight in the pie cycle top prediction, which may not cross this cycle or any other model. React to the data, do not predict. Also, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to ensure you're receiving all of our content as soon as it's released. And make sure to check out all the resources we've discussed today, as well as the many more that are all available on bitcoinmagazinepro.com, your number one source for Bitcoin analysis. So just to summarize, predicting the Bitcoin bull market top is obviously a practically impossible task. However, looking at historical patterns as well as the evolving data from our current cycle, we could potentially see a peak 50 to 80% higher than our current all-time high. If you just grab the percentage tool from our current peak around 123, 124 and take it to 180K, 220, 225K, it's about 50 to 80% high, which may seem underwhelming, but given the fact that from our bear cycle low at $15,000, the percentage increase from there is Pretty tremendous, especially for an asset that's now in the trillions of dollars. And of course, we did two mathematical models today. Looking at the MVRV bands, we can assume, again, diminishing peaks, it was seven, six, five, four, potentially three this cycle. Then again, that pointed towards $180,000 peak. And then when we looked at the all-time weighted moving average, baseline ratio rolling Z-score, which just rolls right off the tongue, it's currently pointing towards a top close to, as we said, potentially around 220 to $225,000. But like I try to reiterate, every single video, it's always better to react than predict. It'd be great if I said, oh, for, for certain we're going to hit a peak this high. But I'm, I'm sure we'd get way more views, way more clicks, and, and loads of people would come to the channel. People like certainty. If I said we're going to hit $200,000, then this is why people gravitate towards these models that say exactly when and where price is going to top. Because again, people like to know the certainty, and we all have a bias that we want Bitcoin to go higher. Of course, we'd all like to look to these models that point towards a quarter of a million or half a million dollar Bitcoin and say this is going to come to fruition. But realistically, that's not the case. We have to react rather than predict. But if we are predicting, it is better to use these type of models that are adapting to the changing market conditions. Because as we have said, Bitcoin is now a multi-trillion dollar asset. There's potentially institutional inflows. The four year cycle isn't gonna last forever. We may be seeing lengthening cycles due to the institutional capital that's just flowing into the market and the amount of Bitcoin that might never see the open market again. So if we are to use any prediction models, anything that can kind of give us some insight on the future price appreciation or depreciation of Bitcoin, then something like this approach I think is the best way to do it. But again, I can't say it enough times, it's always better to react then predict. If we're looking at on-chain data and huge whales, experienced market participants are beginning to take profit, we're seeing retail FOMO, the derivative markets are way overheated and all of these are providing some confluence along with some macroeconomic factors that point towards potentially some liquidity contractions or less than favorable equity markets. At that point, it doesn't matter what price we're at, it doesn't matter if we're $140,000 or $240,000 take action if you are planning to take some profit or rotate out of bitcoin it doesn't matter what the price is it matters what the data is saying if you like this video then please visit bitcoinmagazineproducom where our analytics help you to go through the noise to make informed data-driven decisions about bitcoin with over 150 live charts personalized indicator alerts in-depth crypto industry reports api access and more offer a fraction of the standard industry price and let me know what your thoughts are on potentially using models like these to predict where Bitcoin's price action could go. Of course, there's a million and one different variables, which we can just never know until we look back in hindsight and say, wow, that was so obvious. How didn't we catch it that time? But again, let me know what your thoughts are on potentially when and where Bitcoin's price could top out in this bull market, if you even think we still are in a bull market. And as always, thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.